Um, one of the big things we have been working on recently is to escrow uh, the majority of Stronghold's SHX holdings. 222 day, we will talk about SHX and XLM in regards to Stronghold finally putting out information on the escrow functionality that they have been talking about. It first got talked about, I think, in late 2024. However, we haven't really had any updates on it. It is hard to find. However, the token emission schedule is fairly aggressive in the first five years, and then it kind of tapers off after that. So what an escrow would do is help to remove tokens from supply. And of course, there are other speculative implications as well. Removing it from the supply would pretty directly relate to potential price impacts as well. Here is the statement that was from the AMA in 2024. One of the early questions about circulating supply, uh, we talked a bit about escrow and time locks. And so that's that's exactly what we're talking about here. Um, the, the, the extra of a time lock that we're looking uh, for uh, deploying onto to Stellar Sarabon is exactly a sort of a DeFi lockup smart contract for SHX. So yes, um, Q1 2025, you'll see us start to roll those out. One of Stronghold's early investors was Ripple. And Sean was actually, I think, the first XRPL developer. And then he went to work on Stellar and Tammy came from Stellar as well. So it would appear as if the Ripple kind of an approach has been pretty influential here. With all of that said, here is the test net version of the smart contract, which we will review in more detail here in a bit. One of the other interesting things is that Sean has been a lot more responsive on X since this announcement, and that is pretty unusual. And I personally don't think that they are caving to the retail heavy public sentiment. I personally think that they are trying to get ahead of something. Here is a clip from that AMA where they hinted at the scale of the escrow itself. Um, one of the big things we have been working on recently um, is to escrow uh, the majority of Stronghold's SHX holdings. So he said a majority. And if you look at this old schedule here, that would be pretty much the majority of whatever point in time is here because besides what has been put out to exchanges, there's not really anything else that would be publicly accessible. Sean has provided a tiny amount of insight on that and he has commented that it would be over 10 billion, which would be 10% of the total supply. And I had asked if it would be over or under 50 billion. And I personally think that they would lock up a pretty significant amount of the total supply. And that would reflect what Ripple has done, even though it was about half. And I think that it could be higher because Stronghold is a lot earlier in the process and that escrow has helped and it will continue to help the price impacts for XRP. And with all of the influence from Ripple and Stronghold, I think that it is highly likely that it could start in a much more aggressive way. And it appears as if about two thirds of people actually shared that opinion. So as of May 8th, the one that they published at the start was only on testnet. However, the tests after that would actually incorporate real SHX, which Stronghold playfully referred to as a nothing burger. Here is a review of the more recent smart contract for escrow. The more recent smart contract for escrow actually had 10 million SHX in it. And Sean had commented that even 100 million would be tiny. And I'll speculate on this a bit more at the end. However, 
I personally don't think that Stronghold will create this escrow just to withhold tokens to help the price of the token itself. I think that they probably have some more advanced kinds of happenings that line up with other things that they have talked about. And I thought it would be interesting to see how you could possibly combine an escrow functionality with DeFi because that is a topic that they have talked about for a long time. Stronghold has been putting out educational content on what an escrow actually is and how it operates. Blockchain escrow offers several key advantages, such as immutability means that transaction details cannot be altered once they've been recorded on the blockchain, ensuring a tamper-proof audit trail. With decentralization, no single entity controls the transaction, increasing escrow security and reducing the risk of fraud. More transparency means all parties can view the status of the transaction in real time. And of course, blockchain's automated processes significantly reduce settlement times. Smart contracts and escrow can also reduce the paperwork around property deeds, mortgage agreements, and closing statements by digitizing and securely storing all of them on the blockchain, where they can be accessed by all authorized parties involved. And the example there of real estate is a particularly interesting one because with what Stronghold has actually publicly talked about and has published, there is not a lot of implication that would point towards real estate. However, in a separate piece of educational content, they talk about just that. Blockchain introduces another level of efficiency, transparency, and trust to the escrow process. Let's look at how real estate transaction using blockchain-powered escrow might work. The buyer and the seller agree on the terms, which are then coded into the smart contract. Then the buyer transfers funds to the smart contract address on the blockchain where the funds can be secured. When all conditions such as property inspection and title transfer are met, the smart contract automatically releases funds to the seller. It's simple. This process gets rid of the need for a traditional escrow agent, reduces costs, and also mitigates the risk of potential disputes. And here is kind of an overview of what is happening with StrongholdNet. It also talks about escrow. So if you combine what Stronghold is actually working on right now with potentially reducing the total supply by 50% or higher, it has a lot of potential here. Stronghold made big moves this year, from faster payments and smarter data to setting the foundations for community-led decisions. 2024 was transformative for us. We expanded our team, strengthened our partnerships, and most importantly, delivered real value to our community. Our community is growing too. We now have over 100,000 strongholders across our platforms, but it's not just about the numbers. What really matters is how involved everyone is in shaping Stronghold's future. Everything we're building works together. Your ideas guide what we build, our tech makes it possible, and our community helps spread the word. Want to be a part of this? Visit stronghold.co to find our updated Stronghold Net overview and join our community. Your voice matters in where we go next. Thanks for believing in what we're building. We're just getting started. And I always have an unpopular opinion on this. I personally don't think these kinds of companies who have the real world experience and the real world connections with very powerful people involved really care about what retail thinks right now. Um, it's a good thing to talk about and to express. However, I'm more interested in what the company itself is actually spending its time on. I am not too interested in having a community around a coin. I mean, you don't have a community around stocks. So I don't know. It's a thing where I have an unpopular opinion on that, but I don't see that changing anytime too soon, honestly. Here is the actual explanation of the originally posted smart contract. And uh, I had AI help me on this. In step one, you have the contract name itself. 
which put a certain amount of tokens into the contract, which the 10 billion here is actually not right because of the way that the number values in the code itself actually work. I think there's seven places behind the decimal point. So it was actually uh, confirmed by Stronghold to only be 10. You have a transaction hash with an entry of this. There are two steps in the transaction itself. First, you actually lock away the amount here, and then you transfer it to the escrow account itself, which is in the event emission, and it logs the transfer. It emits an escrow event, it records that in a certain way, and a claim after timestamp, which means that when it goes into the escrow account, it cannot be taken out for a specified amount of time, which is comparable to how the XRP one works as well. Got persistent updates, escrow creation, uh, you're updating your amounts, and then the rest is just kind of tech stuff, which I probably didn't exactly explain that technically accurately, but uh, for the purposes here, that is pretty much how it works. On May 12th, which is after the revised contract was actually posted, they invoked 10 more contracts, which five were invoked and five were unlocked. So they were testing the escrow itself and the claim of the tokens after time lock. Goku XLM broke down the contract architecture too, and he explains it pretty well. And he also calls out the Stronghold Net API V2. And I have that in a different topic related to another topic that I have talked a lot about. So I won't really talk about that here. However, it does appear as if Stronghold is actually redesigning the network itself to fall in line with this uh, expanded functionality. Captain X actually explained it too, and Stronghold officially approved it. And here is where the review is called out here. They have a total of 10 invoked contracts, each with 1 million SHX. It calls out the timestamps of the time lock, the date of deposit, which is certainly not a nothing burger. Here is what I speculated on. So if we open this, I was essentially asking, could the stronghold escrow functionality be used to generate some kind of yield while the tokens are in the escrow account? And it's not something that has been talked about a whole lot. It's not something that has been actually tried a whole lot in the current crypto environment. And that's mainly because the whole point of it being in an escrow account is to keep it secure. However, with the rapidly evolving state of DeFi and all of the options out there and how Stronghold has actually talked about it a lot, I would imagine that there are options that could create some kind of a percentage of return on the amount of tokens while in the escrow account itself. So that has been talked about in the past. And the only example that AI was referring to was a 2021 article that describes smart escrow contracts which allowed the amount escrowed to earn yield. And projects like Escrow Block aim to perform just that. So it sounds as if it's probably held up because of regulations and such. And of course, it's probably a topic that would create a lot of skepticism as well. However, it is speculation and I am happy to speculate a little bit.